So we have Welcome, welcome, welcome to Learning Reaper. I am your host, x.e.l.o. Today, what I want to do is actually talk about two step sequencers that I really like inside of Reaper. They are both scripts made by users. One of them is called M Sequencer. It is made by Arthur McArthur. Big shouts out to Arthur McArthur. I'm going to show you how that actually works and how to actually use it. And the other one is MPL 5K manager which is a really dope one and he added an option in there to actually do a step sequence so i want to actually go over that one with you guys as well so it just matters which one you kind of choose or which one you think is a little bit better let me know below inside the comment section which one you guys will actually be using and trying and if you want me to do an extended video on either one of these step sequencers so without further ado let's get into it all right, so here we are in Reaper, and this theme is called Reaper Tips. If you want to get your Reaper to look and set up like mine, I have a whole bunch of videos and tutorials available on this page. But if you do want to just get the reconfiguration file that I have, I have it available on my website. It's xelohh.com. You can go there and actually download it, and you have all the shortcuts and things that I have inside of my Reaper currently. You'll be able to actually use it inside of yours as well. Right. And I also on the website, we have an option to actually download my smash kit, which is absolutely free. You can download it so you can actually get some sounds and samples inside of the Reaper as well. But let's get started. All right. So usually I would like to start with telling you how to actually set up a database. A database is a really easy way to kind of get your sounds to be in one location. So if you have a whole bunch of kicks, a whole bunch of snares, you can actually have a database of those sounds. It'll make it easier for a Reaper to kind of find them and actually set them up inside of the step sequencers. So the way to do that is you make sure you have your Media Explorer open. You can right click in here and it'll give you an option that says create new database and it's just that simple you create the database and as you can see here i have a couple of them set up on the side already right let's get started with the mix sequencer all right so i have a shortcut down here that i created and basically this brings up the mix sequencer so it makes it really easier to kind of set up and and see everything that's going on. You have an option for your length right here. So if you wanted it to be more than two bars, you can set it to 64, which would be four bars, but let's set it back to 32, which is just a two bar loop. I'm going to actually set a loop marker on here and make it a little bit easier for myself. And right here is this pattern sequence. So you can actually go through the patterns this way, really easy. Um, if you, like I said, if you want a detailed video about this, uh, let me know below in the comment section, but I'm just going to kind of get started. So I'm going to go through my kicks. I'm just going to grab a kick and drag it into this first option here. And if you click over here, you'll be able to hear it. Uh, so let's add another, let's add a snare. I'm going to add that top snare that's up there. Just drag and drop it into here. The difference is if I try to click on this one, it's not going to play because this, it doesn't have the auto play on. So if I, uh, do the record option for uh, the arm. It. Now you'll be able to hear the sound itself, right? So let's do a hi hat. All right. So we have our kick, snare, hi hat, and open hat. And if you want to move these around, which is really cool, you can kind of move them around to wherever you want to, and it'll show inside of the track view as well, right? Um, really easy to add things in here. So if you wanted to add a sound, you just click with your left click and it'll add, if you want to remove, you just right click on that cell and it'll remove it. So left click to add, right click to remove, pretty uh, easy. If you right click on here, it'll give you an option to open up uh, like your MIDI editor if you wanted to. You can also clone and duplicate tracks really easy this way as well. Uh, give you an option to delete. You could do a two step, a four step or an eight step. So let's just do a regular four step in here and let us do a duplicate of this just so I can show you it'll duplicate exactly what was on the other track as well. And this is cool because it gives you an option to kind of set things up a little bit differently. Um, so let's say I wanted to change this sound up here, right? I have these arrows that I can use, or I can use the dice to do a random sample. And if I wanted to bring up the RS5K, I can hit on this eyeball. It'll bring that up. 
So yeah, so let's change it to something simple. And I'm gonna change these to automatically set. It's because I rather it auto. So you can right click on here and just do automatic record track enable. Uh, that makes it easier for me. I like it this way easier. Just so if I'm clicking on here, it'll still play the sounds, right? And it'll automatically go to that track whenever I click it down here and you'll be able to hear the sounds. So really cool, um, kind of simple, easy way to kind of get this going. So let's do this one as that, and let's do this one as the first one. So now we have this. Okay, so you have an option to do offsets if you wanted to. So I'm gonna go over here and offset these tracks to put a little bit of swing on it as well. Right, and I can also click on this little arrow here and it'll bring a little drop down for me so I can kind of change the velocities of some of these, right? And over here, I have the option to do some pitch and offsets. So this is really cool that you have the option to do these in here. So let's say we do these hi-hats here. Let's kind of like bring them down a little. Let's do one here. Let's do one here right before the snare comes back in. And probably one more here. Right, so now we have these velocities in place. Uh, let's do some pitches. Um, pitch this one. Let's pitch these uh, like a downward kind of motion. And I'm just clicking and dragging across to do this. Right, uh, and let's do this one up. So now you have So really simple and easy way to do that. Uh, so let's say that uh, we needed, we wanted to actually add a regular sound. I'm just gonna click on this piano right here and it's gonna create uh, a key zone classic. So I have a key zone classic over here in the track place. If I hit this plus sign, it'll add it into the step sequencer. So if I wanted to, I can play on a keyboard, right? And record something in, or I can just click in if I wanted to in here as well. So let's just do um, every eight steps, right? And let's just add one more here. So I have. So really simple stuff to kind of get uh, anything going that you want to get going. Um, So yeah, so really simple. The M sequencer, I think is a really cool tool to actually use. And you can always still do um, a duplicate of this track if you wanted to, and you can add more chords or more sounds if you wanted to inside here as well. Really simple and easy to kind of do. Um, yeah, so let's move on to the other one. So I, got, so I can show you guys exactly what that one's about. All right, so for this one, I'm actually gonna use the MPL RS4K manager. So if I click on here, I already have it docked down here, but it doesn't have to be docked. You can move it around if you wanted to. Um, I think it's really versatile. Um, I'm gonna put it back down here in the dock. Uh, you can also dock the other one as well. Open the M sequencer, you can actually dock this down here as well. So either one of them can be docked, uh, which is pretty cool. All right, so for this, um, you can actually, this is where the databases come in handy. So if you already have like some setup, I have some setup already to make a really cool, easy kit. I can just hit load all to the tracks and it'll create all these sounds in here for me. It already just set everything up that I want, right? Makes it a lot easier for me to kind of get everything set up. So if I hit on this sample area, I can do a random kit. It'll change everything in here. So if I hit on this, so now everything is different. We're here for the step sequencer, so let's get into that. I'm gonna go to the MIDI one, right? So this is the MIDI track for it. I'm gonna do the two bar loop and I'm gonna add a MIDI in here. Uh, for the step sequencer, it does require you to actually add a MIDI. So I'm adding the MIDI on here and if I hit step sequencer, boom, it'll actually create the step sequencer. 
So you have an option to change the length here. You can go uh, up or down. So 32 would be for the four bars. If you wanted to do like the 64, you can do that as well. And that'll be for two bars, but let's just stick to 32, right? And uh, if you actually want to make a brand new rack, you can just click on this rack here. If you want to add a new MIDI, let's say in this area over here, I can just click new and it'll create a brand new MIDI in that area, right? So really cool stuff, uh, really simple to kind of set up and do. Basically, if you click on it, it'll just give you an option to play them. You don't have to actually have them on the record mode to play them, which is a feature that I do like about this one. Uh, you have your mute, your solo, you can change your um, step count. So if you wanted it to be doubled or tripled, you can kind of do that in here as well. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, and let's say we do on the hi-hat, if you right click on the hi-hat itself, it gives you an option to do the fill every two steps, every one step, uh, whichever one you want to do. All right, so we have the two step. We can change the volume of all of these. As you see, the volume is here. You can do a random velocity, which is pretty cool. So I'm just going to do that. I'll just reset it and I'll just do my own kind of a randomize of the hi hat, right? So you have an option to do a randomization of it. You have an option to do like groups and, and cut by. You can cut by whatever one you wanted to cut by. Really simple, pretty cool, and easy way to kind of do all these things in here. Right. Uh, so let's say we did a snare, right? And we wanted it to be on every eight step, uh, but we wanted to move this over, right? So we can actually hit this step and move it over, right? And we can also flip these if you wanted to flip it. So really, really cool, um, kind of easy to set up, but I don't even think that we need that many of them, but let's move this over to about there, right? So that kind of matches up with the other one we were doing. Let's do some kicks. So we have, right? So really cool um, options to do in here. And you can do like offsets. So let's do a little offset of the hi-hat itself. So let's do like a little triplet here. And let's, for this one here, this 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 one here, uh, and this is just like the other one, if you right click, it'll remove it. If you, if you left click, it'll add, right click will remove, right? So let's do a split, right? So this split is a really cool option. So let's say we wanna split this last one, right? And you split it two. As you hear it tripled, let's do one here. So pretty cool um, options that you have in this one as well. It doesn't really give you like the, the pitch one like the other one does, but I think it's still pretty cool that you get the option to kind of do that. Uh, the difference between the other one and this one to me is I get to actually go and play on my keyboard any of these sounds and i don't have to actually rely on the step sequencer to do that i can just play whereas the other one you have to go like one by one and kind of do it you can't just do right so that is one of the advantages of actually doing it with this one but these are the two that i actually like right now and if you guys are interested in them i should have a link below in the description of this video and if like i said if you want this configuration and set up like i have you can actually go to my website xeloh.com and pick that up today and if you want to get some of these sounds that i'm actually using for the drums these are my smash kit sounds so you could definitely pick that up on the website absolutely free so definitely check it out and once again, I want to thank you guys for watching Learning Reaper. Until the next time, people. Peace. Hey, you. Yes, you. YouTube wants you to watch this video next, man. Go ahead and click it. I'll wait. <laughs> nah, I'm just playing. I'm not going to keep waiting here. All right. I will see you in the next video, though. Peace.